All right, well, welcome again to this edition of A Flame and Hole. You are welcome again, and uh, we'll continue on our discussion by weekly stewardship. This will be um, the second in the third series session. And um, the aim is to explain the biblical understanding of money and wealth. And the objective is to enable participants apply fundraising principles in their ministries. And when we say ministries, we are not um, directly per se referring to just pastors or men of God like we like to call them in our time. You might have your personal ministry. You might have something that God has called you into. Um, how would you apply fundraising um, in this? <clears throat> so basically, that's what um, we're trying to achieve. Uh, our discussant for today, Pastor Remamnura Joel, coordinates the youth ministry, Remam Global Ministry, based in Makodi, Benue State. He's married with three children. Um, I know that the couple is heavily involved in trying to raise young generations of um, Christians, especially as regards sex education, um, marriage, and the likes. And they are also involved in ministries to the internally displaced persons. Uh, in the northern part of Nigeria. Uh, Bro Victor Kwa is a kingdom advocate committed to helping humanity come into the fullness of purpose. He's also fully involved in, in um, Destiny Army in Nigeria, uh, OTA to be precise, a ministry that aims at reaching out to the unreached within and around Ogu State. Um, Bro, NS Afalabi is the president of Destiny Army International, focus on evangelism and youth development. Uh, he works closely with Bro Victor. And of course, um, people like say my humble self and myself. Um, others will say whether I'm humble or not. <laughs> so uh, last Sunday, we looked at some insights from the Bible, where we said every nation has resources. And something for me does understand that God owns everything. Uh, we also sought to bring out a narrative that Paul wasn't excited about external help per se. He was willing to give himself. We went ahead to talk about Paul's um, encounter when he got to a particular city and he met um, Priscilla and Aquila. The Bible mentioned that they were tent makers. Coincidentally, he was a tent maker. He didn't rely on them 100% to fund his ministry needs he ensured that he used his own hands to work and also uh, provided for, for ministry. And one key verse that we spent and dwell so much on was 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verse 1 to 4. Today will be, before we proceed what we we'll have today, we'll go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and read from verse 1 to 5, and I'll have my discourses here. I have shed more light on that. Um, but we also saw that there were self-supporting local churches in the New Testament. Galatians 6, 6 threw some light on that, right? So yes, we should um, encourage people to give to missions. We should not discourage receiving from outsiders, especially from European countries or um, larger communities, bigger than um, where we are. But there's a need for us to teach Christians uh, that they are stewards of whatever resources have been given to them. And out of the little they have, they should give to missions, they should give to self and to church growth. And that way we can all grow together as one. Right? So we ended up our discussion last um, week by asking why are local resources not being developed? Uh, we discovered that that might be because of poor understanding of stewardship um, or indulgence by external donors. And we saw that one major reason, especially in Africa and a part of the world, is that we tend to believe that we are poor and the poor do not give. And that takes us um, basically to, uh, to this passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 1 to 15. I'll read and I'll give our discussant time to add one or two things, starting from Bro Remam, then Bro Victor, and Bro Afolabi. Um, we'll give you some two minutes or there about three or minutes there about to, to make some comments. I'll read from verse one to five. 
And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. Yes, Brother Imam, anything you want to quickly add before we move on to the basic thing for today? Sorry, I need to unmute you. Um, just a moment. Try unmuting yourself, Brother Imam. Okay, all right. Okay, okay great. You are online now. All right. We, we hear Paul testifying about the Macedonian church. Uh, what a great testimony. First of all, he was, he was acknowledging the grace that um, they were, he was seeing in their lives. So in, in the midst of um, poverty, there's a grace that comes out of it. And uh, there are three things I want to point out from verse 3. Of course, the testimony was that in the midst of their, not just ordinary poverty, their poverty and their situation was, um, was on the extreme. It was a very severe trial. And um, in the, just imagine the mixture, the trial, in the, but there was an of, overflowing joy that comes from uh, their trials that came from Christ. An extreme poverty that came out. So Bible said they, the testimony that Paul gave was that they gave, first of all, as much as they were able, one, then they went beyond their ability, two, then entirely on their own. They were not cajoled. They were not um, ma ma manipulated, as uh, the, most times people are when they want to be cajoled, you, you, you'll be blessed if you give this, you get hundredfold. They were not cajoled out of, on their own. But I love the fact that, um, first of all, whatever state any man is, the Bible clearly states that there's what you can give. You can give at your level of poverty. Mm -hmm. Nobody doesn't, everybody has something that you can give. And then there's going beyond, that's sacrifice now. Going beyond what you have, that's what they did. They went beyond their poverty, they did extra things to, to support. Um, ordinary, they would, they would have been waiting to be giving. <laughs> they would have been waiting that Paul should raise support for them. But the, t the testimony here was that they gave what they had and go went beyond that joyfully, generously, and they were a blessing and they were looking for, for opportunity. They were looking for opportunity out of their poverty to give to the work of God. And that's very quite challenging. That means there's no excuse. There's no excuse any church can give. You're in the village or you, there's no excuse you can give that you, you're waiting for people to give you. You can give out of what you have. And we read through scriptures. That's a pattern we see through scriptures. Anytime they were about to build, build anything, they first of all gave from amongst themselves. And everybody gave. Everybody was looking for opportunity. And then there's a project. They're looking for opportunity to give. And they gave generously, more than what they needed. So that's uh, my input quickly, so that I don't take care. Thank you, bro. Okay. Bro, Victor, over to you. All right. Um, just to add a little to what uh, he mentioned, uh, he said, Paul said something here. He said, they exceeded our expectations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when, just like he was saying, you know, when people that, he said, they had what? Extreme poverty. Like, that word there is, is quite, is quite um, touching. Extreme poverty. It wasn't just that they were poor. It was an extreme form. He said, yet they exceeded our expectations. And if you look, the next statement there, use why that was possible. It says they give themselves first of all to the Lord. They give themselves first of all to the Lord. It is difficult for people to give to us or to others. That's what I mean by us. So they give themselves to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. It's difficult for people to give of themselves 
if they have not first given themselves to God. You know, just like we've been discussing, until we understand that even we ourselves, we are owned by the Lord. That's the concept of ownership. Mm. And that everything we have is His. It becomes difficult for us to, you know, bring out of what we have. But one, we realize that what we have is not really our own. And two, if we have given ourselves to the Lord, then we would trust, we would trust the Lord to supply what we need. You see, one of the problems with giving is that we don't really trust. We are afraid that once we give, what will happen to we ourselves? Like, how do we ourselves cope? But when we know that, see, we, are, we have given ourselves to the Lord. We've, we put ourselves in the hands of the Lord. So I am, we are, I'm not concerned about, uh, about myself because I'm trusting someone to take care of me. It makes it, it, makes it possible for us to um, go beyond, go over and beyond just what we think we can do because we know that, see, come what may, I am in the hands of the Lord. I've given myself to the Lord. So if we are going to be able to give of ourselves the way the Macedonia, see, he called it a grace. Yeah. That's also another thing I want to also point out. He called it a grace. It says he wants you to know about the grace that God has given to the Macedonian church. So most times we ask for grace. This one grace that we don't we don't we don't ask for a lot in the church. We ask for grace to do signs and wonders, grace to do so many things. But this is one grace that Paul said, this grace is quite commendable. So it is a grace we should we should seek to operate in also. The same way we want to operate in all the other graces, we must also seek as believers to also operate in this grace of giving. And the way that this grace comes, it says, they gave themselves first to the Lord. So we must first be given to the Lord. Then it will be easy for us to, you know, release ourselves and what we have. Okay, I think I will stop here at the moment. All right, thank you, bro. And they did all this in the midst of a severe trial. They did all this in the midst of severe trial. Right? Rafulabi, over to you. You want to add something quickly? Uh, well, they said almost everything that is there anyway. But then I just wanted us to still, I wanted the audience to know something there in a uh, Beginning from verse one, he says something about a grace. All pray for our people. The Bible says he works in us both to will and to do. The church had that grace. They had a grace to do more than normal. They had a grace to go beyond their capacity. I think when the believer gets to that point, when he's so giving to God, and you can even look at it, there's a contract there. The Bible says that from that verse 2, that they have they were in the midst of severe trial mm. and overflowing joy. Severe trial, overflowing joy. Do they go <laughs> hand in hand? No. Those are, it's a sharp contract in the midst of severe trial and overflowing joy. In other words, these guys have been built to a point where they can both abound and can be abased. They are not bothered about themselves. It's all about God. So if you look at that church, they have actually grown spiritually. And that's what is showing in verse 5, that they gave beyond expectation. They went beyond the expectation of the apostles because their lives have been given to the cause of the living God. So hence, they had that grace. Been, that's why Victor talked about the concept of ownership. Mm. When the moment you get to that point, and you can't get to that point without, there's a level of spiritual uh, st uh, stability or stamina you would get to, and you'll be able to understand all of this. And I think one major thing we should actually do is to build our people to that point. And the only way we can do that is what Prophemi said earlier. We continue to teach them. Because what you don't know, you cannot make do it. I think that's a very important 
point I actually want to chip in. Thank you. All right, thank you. We'll wrap up this discussion on this um, Bible passage by looking at verse 4. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. I was actually looking for a translation that um, made it look like they were, they, they were urgently pleading for the privilege of sharing in the giving to the poor people. Right, these people were already extremely poor. And they were pleading for the privilege of sharing in the service of giving. Right? It had, there, there is a, a big mindset shift between what they have and what is available, um, um, you know, in abundance in our time. Uh, and church leadership and individuals, as, as, as it were, as a church, we need to understand that aspect and go beyond that in the way we treat giving uh, in the church. So we'll move on with our slide. What are the dangers of dependence on external money for evangelism in our various locations? And by external here, we'll just to, to clear, to, to shed more light, the external here doesn't mean um, only outsiders. It, I'm, I'm, I'm a church, so what is the danger of depending on other people you know, to, to the extreme for whatever ministry God has given unto me as an individual, then what is dependence on the church as a group of people? What is the danger of the church as a group of people depending on outsiders? That is external money for evangelism in our various locations. The outsiders could be some Sorry, I went off briefly, and the, the, the connection went off. We're talking about dangers of um, dependence on external money for evangelism in our various locations. And I was trying to shed more light that uh, when we say external here, it's twofold. I'm an individual, and I'm a church from the biblical definition, right? So what is the danger of me depending, you know, excessively on other people to fund whatever mission or ministry that God has given to me, especially in the area of evangelism. Then a church as a group of people, a local church, what is the danger of depending, you know, excessively on external money? And I was trying to say that some 30, 40 years ago in the church history in Nigeria, we were relying heavily on funds from Europe and some other places to push mission and to push evangelism. I know it still exists in some areas. Um, what is the danger of doing that? Right, so we'll be discussing that in the next um, 20, 25 minutes as we wrap up discussion for today. Right, so, um, Brother Imam, Brother Victor, would you want to pick one of these? Dangers of dependence on external funds? You can unmute yourself. Okay, Brother Victor has unmuted himself. Go ahead, Brother Victor. Okay. Um... It it's generally discourages local resource mobilization. You know, when when you have when you have funds coming from outside, or when you are always looking towards getting something from outside, it discourages one from looking inward. Um, if we just look at even if we don't look at uh, the church setting now, just look at we as individuals, maybe in our place of work or our businesses, if if always you're expecting to get something from outside, always get something from outside, you might have things within, maybe in your house. Okay, some things happen sometimes when um, you have been used to, each time you need to do something, you go outside, you buy something and come in. And you don't discover that at the point, maybe you are rearranging the house or something, you don't discover that I actually had maybe a stockpile of this thing lying around in the house somewhere or something. But until maybe there was a, some, you couldn't just go out, maybe it was night or something, and you just there scratching, ah, it's like I kept something somewhere, and then you start scratching everywhere, you just, wow, I even had much more than I thought I really had. That's the same thing that happens to us as individuals and as a church. We find it easier, it's easier, sort of, you know, to just go out, uh, ah, we don't have anything, um, we are from, at least as we rated on Nigeria now, we are from, um, the headquarters of uh, poverty in the world, quote and unquote. 
uh, we don't have anything. There is nothing to tell people to bring. There is nothing for us to get. We need to get something from outside. But when we actually look within, we find out that we have so much. And that's one of the dangers of dependence on external funds. What are, what are those things that, okay, something happened when I was on campus. Uh, we, the technical units, we needed to, we needed to uh, our sound was getting quite terrible. And we had been looking towards uh, the church itself as a campus fellowship, you know, the affiliated church. We we're expecting them to give us some funds to uh, buy some materials that we needed. Then from there, when we couldn't get from there, we went to the central executive of the fellowship, give us funds. They were like, why they were delaying? So we had to you know, sit down and look at ourselves like, okay, what can we do about this thing? We got to our store where we normally pack stuff and we discovered almost like six redundant speakers that had just small, small faults, small, small faults, small, small faults. And we just said, instead of having six speakers that are not working, and we are looking for one new money from somewhere to go and get, to go and start developing, to go and start um, buying new speakers or what, can't we even look for someone that repairs speakers? Even if it's to give this guy two of the speakers, anything he wants to do with it, do with it. Then fix these other four speakers for us. That's exactly what happened. And without getting money from anywhere, we had four working speakers added to what we are doing. And you know, from there, we just it just made us immediately to, you know, throughout the time we were on campus for the next two years from then, we did not collect one cobble from our central executive to do anything. We started how because that's opened our eyes that see, instead of looking outside, what can we do from within us to raise these things? So we said, then I remember, see. If you have, if your department is doing something, we are come and set up sound. It just needed maybe one or two of us in the unit. We we'll set up sound for you. So, but what, what am I, what am I bringing out? As, as long as we are looking towards money coming from outside, we could not see what was in our house. Mm. So that is one very big danger of depending on external funds. It discourages us from looking at what is in the house. Praise God. Thank you so much. Rory Mam. Yes. Add, um, adding to what our brother just said, the low motivation to give local is almost related to the first one. Uh, it also discourages the motivation to give locally because you're expecting from outside. That motivation is not, is not there to give. But I'll talk more on the um, the reputation of Christian leaders at stake. As a result of um, external funds, depending basically from um, funds from outside, it raises a lot of um, doubts. I, I remember there's a, a, a body that organizes a good training, training that builds a lot of believers. And one of the days they were doing the, they were giving certificate at the end of the training they were running of a certificate, the training, and they were given certificate. They invited the governor of that state. So when the governor came, and um, he dropped some, he dropped something, <laughs> he dropped money, and I got to know this. This was it last year because after that year, that this is about three or four years ago. Subsequent years, the training is every year. The training, they stopped doing the training. I was wondering what happened, what went wrong, only for me to come across a brother. And I was asking, ah, that training has been a blessing to a lot of people. Why is the training not going on? He just said, he told me that um, uh, that training that he did last that time, that the governor came, he actually dropped money. So it has, the leaders, it had issues among the leaders. They had issues of training, how to use the money. No, money can cost a lot of things. So it brought a, it affected the reputation of leaders. So this mm -hmm. way, and we, of course, we know the leaders. So, so this depending for the month, the train was going on without money from outside, or well, maybe just because he came, he felt it, it, it was okay for him to just give. Yeah, but when he gave among themselves, they misused the money and it affected their reputation. So it's a good example to portray this point that when you're depending on so resources from outside, mm. it has a way of uh, affecting the reputation of the leaders. Because I can tell you that after that incident, all the people involved, the testimony that People that know about it, uh, we hear about them. It's not going to be a good testimony. Mm. So that's part of one of the key danger 
of depending on uh, mostly on external funds. Yeah, and, and 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 we must state here that we aren't discouraging um, usage or expecting funds from outside. But what we're seeing is, if you have missed out from the last four episodes, you need to go see this discussion from the very first episode with discussing stewardship, Christian stewardship, and that as Christians, everything given to us was entrusted to us by God and to be used. And one of them is that we could use our financial um, endowment or material endowments for evangelism and church work, right? So we're not saying don't expect money from outside, but how can we build? How can we build ourselves uh, and build our members and build church people to know that God has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own, you know, God has given it to us, right? Rather than fold our arms and say, our church building project won't go on simply because um, somebody somewhere is not giving, or rather than fold our arms as, an, as individuals and say, you know, this pavement cannot be done simply because bro, so, 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 who is richer than I am, gave so, 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 and therefore I could as well not give. Or rather than fold our arms and say, until so, 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 and so does this, then I won't do. We are still, we will give individually accounts for what has been entrusted to us. When the, when, when the master came, he asked the man, the servant that, we, that was given five talents, he asked him individually how he used his five talents. Ditto for the man who had three. And of course, the servant who had one. They all individually gave account, right? And, and, and that is that. So, bro, bro, um, bro, Ernest, I'll take you to the next slide. Of course, jealousy among leaders closely related to the example that um, bro Joel gave now, reputation of um, Christian um, leaders sometimes just feel jealousy. This, like, um, this branch is receiving more than this branch, and it causes a lot of, um, a lot of strife. You see that in churches where they have a central body, and you now have some local branches maybe spread around, and one branch is feeling like, this, the, 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 the central body is showing more attention. Ladies and gentlemen, or men and brethren, this work is God's work, right? This issue of during my time, we did this, right? And I've left campus for, for a while. I am brother Imam, we're classmates. I'm brother Imam, I doubt if anybody remembers um, what you did as the president of the fellowship that time. If it's going to be remembered by anybody, maybe people in your set, I mean, that knowledge is gone. I was on the campus yesterday, um, uh, I think specifically Covenant University, and I was walking by a particular department and I saw something that looked like a plaque, you know, and, and, and they wrote on it uh, something, something, I can't remember, I didn't know I was going to use this example, maybe I should have taken a photograph, that something, 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 and they, and they said 2015, 2017, 2015, 2016 set. And I stood in front of it and I looked at it and I asked myself, so what? Now you place this here. So how do I know who, who is 2017, 20? How do I know? Right? What impact does it have on you wherever you are now if you were 2017 or 2016? I mean, so sometimes some of the things we, we pursue and try to say in my own time, in my own tenor, in this parish, in my own tenor, in this place, we did this. Just do God's work. Just do the work you've been sent to do. Right? If the external, if the bigger church if the main parish, or I don't know um, how they call them, the headquarters is not doing, what can you do? I'm not saying you shouldn't make demands, you shouldn't complain, but look inwards. What can you do? You might have your widow's might, give it. The work of God shouldn't stop simply because somebody outside or somebody else isn't doing something. I understand the fact that we are a body and the, the, if, if the tongue doesn't do its work, then the whole body feels it. I understand that. But I also have this feeling, even though I can't prove it biblically, but I have this feeling that if a local congregation doesn't need a prophet, they may not have a prophet among them. If a local congregation doesn't need a spiritual gift per se, they may not have somebody who has been endowed by that gift. Right? I believe that as a local con congregation grows, God give 
the members or bring people from outside to become members of that congregation that have the spiritual needs that the congregation needs to grow. He won't leave us comfortless. He said that. Uh, let's move to the next slide, um, Brafolabi. So dangers of dependence on external funds. We have here that it robs um, the joy that comes from giving or the church cannot exist without fund. Would you want to contribute on any of this? Dangers of dependence on external funds. Hello, bro. Ernest, are you there? You need to unmute yourself. All right. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, we are live now. But the, there's a little challenge. The network is just skipping. Oh, I understand. It's breaking and. Oh, okay. I can I can see so that we, from your. Well, on this slide, joy that comes from giving. I think I will talk a little bit on that. It's like you were trying to refer to something about yourself that is this joy that comes from when you give to somebody you see it is it is god giving if you are used to contributing to a to a kingdom advancement here on earth it is natural you just as a feel most especially if you are able to be god on specific instructions give to this and you did most times the joy that comes from it you can't actually measure it so when you deprive people in this in in the locality from giving you deprive people within from doing the job from giving reaching out to this to this kingdom advancement project you realize that you rob them of that joy when you read through the scriptures, the Bible says, when the Moses now called for materials to build, he got to a point when he had to tell the people, this is too much. We do, this is in essence. The Bible said the people gave with joy. They gave willingly. They gave from their heart. And another thing you would have to see from them, there was a joy in them mm. in doing it. So when you give, there is a kind of joy that comes from giving. If not necessarily that you garbage in, you garbage out. You expect that when I give this, God will in turn just wire me with that right. If you get to a point when if you are not able to actually allow the people within do something, you become solely dependent. I think I was sharing something with Victor recently. And he, 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 we were to raise money for a project for a group. And I was like, should we involve people like this? Or we should limit, should limit it to the level of the escorts. And at some point, I told him, I'm already feeling uneasy because I had successfully cut out, cut out some persons. Now, God taught me a lesson. In the course of it, I realized that I received a shocker. Some of the persons you would have expected that they would reach out. It never happened. But I, 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 only a few actually turned up. But there are some students that I least expected that they would, you know, turn up. They would give something. In fact, I told myself, if I had known, I should have allowed everyone to do the same. So the point is, you, you, you make the church solely depend on the outsider when you try to cut off certain persons from giving. And you, the church will be robbed of the sense of, you can just imagine, you, you feel like you do not own this. Somebody else is you know, financing it. You, you, you can't take charge, you can't control. If you're not even careful, the external forces would have to control the way you run the program. Sometimes you may find the, the church may find it difficult to carry out some divinely uh, instructed or given programs, assignments, 
just because you would have to heed to a standard or because he who gives you money to run anything will also have yes, a, a kind of power over you. So that's, let me just stop there for, and allow other persons to say something about the slide. Thank yes, you. there's a joy from giving. The Bible says, in fact, the Bible mentioned that God loves a cheerful giver, you know, and sometimes from the human point of view, two words there do not sink. Giving cheerfully. Most times we give, but not cheerfully. It's easier to give grudgingly because when you give with the mindset that as I give, I reduce, and not the mindset of um, John the Baptist that he said he must increase and I must decrease, not that type of de um, reduce. Uh, and when I say reduce, I'm not referring to that. When, when you give the mindset that when I give, then I don't have, right? Especially when you are giving. I love the illustration I gave for NS. When, when you are giving, following an instruction, right? There's a video that, that went somehow viral about um, a month ago. You know, when one of the um, respectable pastors was talking about, um, he was just giving, 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 giving to him, trying to solve everybody's um, problem. And God was like, are you the Messiah? Right? Are, yeah. you the, are you the El Shaddai? Or you are the I shall die if I continue doing this? You know? So there is, there is a need for us to understand that. But we're talking about giving for missions now. And so, and I sometimes I don't like this fact that anytime you, you are saying something online, you have to find a way of balancing it because you don't want criticism. We can just speak our mind as God is saying it now. Um, anybody who wants to read opposing meanings can, but I believe we have a mission here. And that is the fact that mm -hmm. every individual should know that the resources that I was given to by God, God expects you to use it judiciously. And part of it is giving to missions or giving to ministry. Right, so this this feeling like when we give to the church, we're doing the church a favor, or this feeling that when we give to the church, we're doing the man of God a favor, it's not biblical. Giving is normal, right? So there's a sense of lack of ownership that comes when we rely heavily on external donations. Right? Imagine having to give towards missions and you gave sacrificially. You would want to know what is happening in that mission field. You want to know what is happening in that ministry. You want to know if you gave sacrificially, painfully, like we saw in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and you gave even from, from, from pain, um, you, on, you want to know what is happening in that church. You want to know what is happening in that department. And of course, it hinders us from learning to depend on God. Bro, Victor, or Bro, Riman, would you want to um, say something about hindering us from learning to depend on God? All right. All right. Um, also, another point is um, one of the dangers of dependence on external funds is um, to hinder you from learning to depend on God. And the other day I was like uh, studying why God was giving them daily manna. Mm. Uh, people that labor, that work, they pay them once in a month, at the end of a month. And sometimes when we're buying food stuffs in the house, when bulk money comes, we buy what will take us for some time. We don't buy daily. But God decided that they should um, come daily to the manna comes every day. And the Lord's Prayer even says, I give us this day, our daily bread. So I, I think that um, if we're basically waiting for people to give us money, uh, that want to give us money, if you want to do a project, you're writing letters, to this person, ah, this person has money. This person is this person. We're looking at the big, big shots, so to say. Mm. And uh, writing letters to them, they should raise funds for you. Any, any project at all, big or small. Uh, you're, you're depriving yourself of the benefit of learning to look unto God. The reason why God gave them daily manner was that every day, he makes them to look up to God. If God gave them one week provision, the only time he gave them two days provision was on the Sabbath, before, a day before the Sabbath. So that on the Sabbath day, they wouldn't need to go out for food. So that daily, they will know that they are, they are, their manna comes from above. There's a God in heaven that we're looking on to for provision. So, but if you're waiting that everybody is giving you from everywhere, you won't learn, you are, you're losing a very vital uh, foundational learning of 
trusting God for provision. And um, for us, we do some ministry work, and it needs it's it. Most of the things we do need a lot of funds. One of the things we do is that now we do free medical outreaches, and drugs is expensive. Going to reach out to people for free. Sometimes we we were tempted to want to ask people for money. One of the things that God taught us early was that it's his own project. When God puts the idea in our hearts that we're going for this one, we, we wait on God. And surprisingly, some, sometimes a day before the something, God has a way of providing. We don't start looking for later, writing letters around. We, we've learned to wait on God, and God never disappoints. He always mm. provides. And, and the ministry work we do, we basically started with our own funds. We're not waiting for people from outside. But as people see you doing what you're doing, they also support from outside. So we are, we're, we're saying that um, um, one of the very crucial lessons we must learn so that we don't lose out in this uh, benefit is that we shouldn't uh, completely entirely depend on people giving you from your, on your own. You will learn to trust God. God has a way of providing for his work. Thank you, bro. Right, so we, we should we should we should encourage local church members to give. And that was why we started from Second Corinthians chapter eight. Right? Everybody has something to give. Everybody in church has something to give. Even the extremely poor, like we saw in Second Corinthians, the Macedonian church, even the extremely poor has something to give to church growth. I'll give this illustration as we begin to wrap up. Um, there was a need for us to meet very early one day in church and um, and since my house is a little bit far away from church and I know that there could be traffic I left pretty early and um, when I got to church there was a mix-up somewhere and and um, the person holding the key didn't get to church on time so I was outside now when he finally came the church was open and I just rushed in and wanted to sit as usual. And someone just said, no, 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 the chair has not been cleaned. And truly, when I touched it, it was a bit dusty. It just occurred to me that every other time I'd walk, strolled into church and just sat down, you know, carelessly. Somebody had been to church before the service started and had dusted it, the chairs. Somebody did that. Somebody was consistently doing that. That person might not have financial power to contribute to missions or to the church, but that person is consistently giving. That is that person's widow's might. We all have something to give. We all have something to give. Maybe by the time we, we for now, we've been, we've been looking at still worship in terms of finance. We're going to look at still worship in terms of time. God has given us time. In the, in the past um, one month, I've heard of the demise of two very close persons, right? And it just rings a bell that time is not our own. And whether we use it wisely or not, time will go. And part of what God has given us. Yeah, so let's, let's wrap up this by, by um, um, let's jump this slide. Let's jump this slide. What are the benefits that can be derived from a local resource base for our ministries? We just discussed two slides more. I'll call it a wrap. What are some benefits that can be derived from having a local resource base for our ministry? When the, the base for your ministry is, is localized, and by localized, I mean your friends, your relations, yourself, your local church, without necessarily printing letters, we are not saying pretty letters. We are not saying conversing for funds are wrong. But we are saying that if you insist that if you don't get funds from outside, you won't move. One, you'll be wasting the resources God has given you. You won't be building your people. You'll be grooming them to grow and to know how to um, uh, manage funds. And you're also depriving them, like we said in the previous slide, the joy and the benefits and, and the blah, 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 like we said. Yes, yeah, so um, I think we'll just take this one, one, and we'll call it a wrap. Um, Bro Chibuzo, which would you want to start with? Okay, um, let me take that of uh, ownership and responsibility. Okay. Uh, even we've largely discussed it already. Yeah. So you know when you have when you have a local when you have a local resource base, um, 
it gives everyone this sense of um, okay, this is my own thing. You know, one of one of the issues that happens that happens sadly in the church these days is that um, we used to think is the pastor, is the is maybe the Dickens board, is the unit heads, is the departmental heads. Like people don't see these things as it's my own. But one of the things that happens when every, we have a local resource base, um, I even like the word we use there, resource base, not just only financial. When you're, even though we are discussing finances many now, but when your finances is somewhere, your time is invested somewhere, your energy is invested somewhere, the Bible says where your heart, where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Mm. If your treasure is invested somewhere, there is, it will be very difficult for your heart not to be there. So allowing people, making, making people part of, of a project mm. allows them to take re- responsibility for it. Now, when you build up, when, you, when people know that, when the congregation, now I'm talking of in terms of the church, yeah. know that, see, we are not our first, if money comes from outside, fine and good. But this thing is our work. We have to get it done. It immediately gives everyone a sense of responsibility that, see, we are not waiting for something from outside to come. We have to get this thing done by ourselves. So what can we do? What can we do? Immediately, the question changes from um, looking outside. Immediately, we focus this on ourselves. What can we do now within ourselves to get this thing done? Mm. So I think that's one thing that having a local resource base really does for us. One, it enables people to own it. And then it gives us that responsibility for everything we are doing. And as an individuals, um, that is almost very obvious. When you are, you know that, see, this thing is on me. You are not, even if you are going to go and look for something outside, it is you that you are going to go and look for it. Something you can do. Mm. You know, immediately becomes, what can I, what can I do as part of, towards this um, project? So I think uh, that will be all. All right, um, bro. Enes, do you want to pick anyone here or move to the next slide as we round up? Rafalabi, are you here? So we, I'm looking at this, um, it enhances local leaders' integrity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you see, I remember some time ago, like, I, while I was listening to Bro Victor, certain things came to my mind. We wanted to raise money to do certain things in the ministry. And one thing I realized is that people started coming up. You know, you would have to allow the entire body to own the vision, to own the, the, the project, yeah. to come up with ideas, and we have to. Somebody once suggested and said, why can't we print card? You know, all these small, small card people print. It's good, but immediately that was mentioned, something just came to my mind. This, you know, are we not doing what I call advanced begging? You know, in a church, is uh, is the church not actually doing advanced begging? You know, carrying the card around, anybody you see at the place of work, no matter who the person is, please just sign and give me 20 naira. Sign, give me 15 naira. You see, things like this sometimes, it touches my heart. Where is where is believers in the believers' integrity in all of this? So it's 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 really when you have a local resource base, it has a way of you know enhancing the leaders' integrity. There are things, there are lines you cannot cross. How can you just go around anybody you meet? Hey, please sign this paper. Give me 15 era. You know, sometimes it looks somehow. You know, if believers can actually look inwards and build from within, even organizations do that. I remember where I worked some time ago. People do, people, people look inward, not outside. When I mean look inward, not necessarily putting your hand into your capital to do anything. No, you look inward and the resource, the, the money will come out. So, just make sure you make the people own the vision. The money will come out. So that's enhancing leaders' integrity. It's actually very important. When you allow uh, 
people to come in from within and the project is, you know, is financed adequately from within. Mm. The leader has mouth. You can, you'll be able to, there's, there'll be boldness to talk mm. out there. I think that is one thing I actually want. In the same thing, like the issue of uh, minimizes cultural compromise. Mm. There are certain things, you know, although every organization has its own rules, like you were talking about culture. We are not talking about all of those things now, but we're talking about it, it has its own rules. It has, it has its own code of conduct regulations. But do you realize that sometimes some of these, these things can be altered by virtue of external influence. If that external influence is actually a very strong resource well, base for you, mm. sometimes it will be difficult for you to say you, 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 will not, you will not alter that. So I think these are things we actually need to balance in, in, in this kingdom advancement. Thank you. All right, thank you. I think the other points in the slides have been, um, have been discussed before. Next Sunday, when we have when we return, we shall be looking at how we can develop our local resource base in our respective locations. Um, so, if you're listening to us and you, uh, you own a ministry or you're a member of a church, how can you develop your local resource base in your respective locations? Does your church believe that talking about money is is a sin? Well, you need to listen to the very first um, um, the very first episode of this discussion where we, we went through the Bible and we discovered that the Bible mentioned money more times than it did prayer and faith. And even though we so esteem prayer and faith, uh, the Bible said a lot more about money. So discussing money in church and teaching church people how to be entrepreneur, how to manage resources, and how to be self-dependent and at the same time dependent on God, how to create wealth is not sinful. It's not against scripture. In fact, it is scriptural. Teaching members not to be lazy, teaching members to be like Paul, who as a tent maker, continued his work as a tent maker and raising funds for himself and for ministry is biblical. If the church in this generation has to move ahead, we have to look inwards and use the resources that God has given us to develop the place where God has placed us. We can't continue to look at another brother and look for external resources before we grow. If you need to go for missions, you need to do an outreach, look inwards, and if there's a need for external um, donations, we aren't saying it isn't biblical. But we're saying, look at the Bible. There were times when God made it possible for the Egyptians to give their gold and silver to the Hebrew people as they left Egypt. But down the line in the wilderness, the Hebrews had to let go of whatever they got from the Egyptians to build the tabernacle. So if you don't teach your people that giving is fundamental in Christianity, they will never have enough. No one has enough. The richest men in the world are still gathering wealth, right? So we have to understand that what we are, what we are basically, that is that we are stewards and they will must give. So thank you for watching this episode. We hope to be back again next Sunday. Um, please like and subscribe. To this channel if you feel there are other topics or something we overlooked of course you can drop your comments in the comment box and we'll gladly pick them up god bless you and have a wonderful day